Under the Energy Performance Buildings Directive, all EU countries established 15 years ago independent energy performance in buildings assessment and certification schemes. However, there are still several barriers to overcome towards a widely supported and successful implementation of EPCs as effective tools to support the revised CPPD. One of the main obstacles is users' understanding and acceptance of EPCs, nowadays held back by the lack of user-friendliness, reliability, credibility, and cost-effectiveness. User Project aims to contribute to the necessary rebirth of EPB assessment and certification schemes in many ways. This presentation will focus on a proposed set of user-centered and effective indicators integrated in a dynamic EPC report with a view to facilitate the EU harmonization by relying on applicable EPB standards and increase user understanding and acceptance towards the increase of quality in the built environment, especially focusing on deep renovations. The content of this presentation has been prepared by Pablo Carnero, Energy Engineer, Researcher and Project Manager at the Research, Development and Innovation Department at the Valencia Institute of Building in Spain. Research proposes a set of added value holistic indicators contributing to the rebirth of a next generation EPB assessment. Also, it designs a new dynamic and user-centered EPC report. For more information, please refer to Users Deliverable 3.2 available at the project website. But how? The definition of users' contribution to the next generation of EPP certification schemes builds on the ethnographic research performed at each partner level. This endeavor helps defining the transition paths towards a more user-centered approach through the characterization of user needs and expectations of expert users, this is EPP assessors, designers, architects, engineers, etc., and non-expert users, building owners, tenants, and other final users without technical background. Also, user leverages the indicator mapping performed at market level, covering also voluntary certification schemes for the identification of transition paths for the definition of holistic indicators. For further details, refer to Deliverable 2.3 and 2.4 respectively, available at user website. Thus, the findings in relation to the selection of effective indicators and EPC design were to make energy more intuitive and influence behavior of users, which could be materialized through the consideration of indicators covering health, safety, convenience, well-being, and comfort, and also to accommodate a wide scope of use. This by offers several levels of complexity of user interface, develop a modular design in combination with digitalization, also considering variable building situations. This is newly constructed buildings, major renovation, and existing buildings. User CPC is built to behave as a repository of indicators and complementary data. Depending on the type of user, some or all the information is disclosed, hence providing increased flexibility and user-friendliness to the informative document EPCs represent. An expert user needs to have access to the EPC labels as well as to some general information and, if applicable, to guidelines towards renovating the building. However, the expert user also provides and obtains added value from the detailed information about energy performance indicators, both overall and partial. A non-expert user, however, may only be appealed by the basic information from the EPC labels, general information, and renovation guidelines. Nevertheless, a final user, such as a building owners, should be given the option, in case they so desire, to access the complete information. Note that the key approach in user CPP assessment and certification scheme structure is that it contains a great deal of information, but is flexible in how to present it in a way to avoid discouraging and overburdening non-expert users with too many details. This philosophy allows for user DPC to easily integrate itself into digital building logbooks. With this concept information in mind, the creative process of defining users user-centered and effective indicators began. Apart from the ethnographic research and the indicator mapping, with a view to ensure complete alignment with EPB standards, the process started by analyzing the most relevant ones. This is the EN ISO of 2003 of Energy Performance of Buildings, Indicator Requirements, Rating and Certificates, and the EN ISO of 2018 more focus on indicators for partial EPB requirements related to thermal energy balance and fabric features. These documents are mostly restricted to energy indicators. With a view to complement the energy indicators covered by the EPB standards, the project also carried out an analysis of other relevant research initiatives with a view to define complementary to energy indicators. 
smart readiness indicator topical group proposal was analyzed also the Alderton project results sensi project and the triple arena project these projects have been analyzed seeking to define complementary to energy indicators user's value proposition has been conceived considering the assessment high dependency outlined by the key of our art in the standard en iso 52001 Thus, user GPP assessment could be referred to a calculated or measured evaluation of the performance of the building. User certification scheme considers four dimensions of indicators, energy performance, smart readiness, and environmental quality, and cost. Their inclusion in user GPC report is sensitive to the assessment type. See that the calculated assessment contains almost every indicator except for the cost which is considered to be meaningless unless the assessment is not performed under standardized conditions, but rather tailored. Contrarily, for the measured assessment, which holds the benefit of being more straightforward, however, the indicators not listed as included could be implemented on a voluntary basis. The energy indicators were divided into overall and partial. The overall indicators represent a comprehensive view of the building. They allow for design freedom provided certain limitations are fulfilled. They could be regarded as an outer limitation, a maximum that should not be exceeded. The partial indicators at elemental level constitute the most specific assessment and focus on a single item. They are the basis from which the design is built. They could be regarded as an inner limitation, a minimum that should always be fulfilled. When a com combined partial indicator is designed, a certain design freedom in the region between the elemental and the combined indicator appears. Note that user does not intend to define EPB requirements for each building situation, given that it is a responsibility of the member states. However, this structure of indicators aims to ease such definition. User's suggestion in relation to requirements on energy indicators is that they should be defined in an incremental manner. For shallow, medium renovations, the elements renovated should abide by the applicable elemental partial indicators. So items that are completely fully replaced by new components or products must have great energetic quality. In majorly renovated buildings, the building components are modified to a certain degree. Apart from the elemental partial indicators, a certain combined partial indicators may also apply. Moreover, with a view to giving flexibility and design freedom to deep renovations, the possibility of abiding by the combined partial indicators, while not meaning certain elemental ones, could be considered. What should always be considered is that partial interventions in existing buildings should not block or lock in future interventions towards reaching the deep renovation potential. The requirements in terms of indicators should be designed with that in mind. For new buildings, it is the greatest opportunity to reach cost-effective high energy efficiency. Thus, the requirements should be most ambitious, not just covering overall energy performance indicator, but also meeting the minimum partial indicators at elemental or combined level. In light of the foreseen recast of the EPBD with regards to minimum energy performance requirements for existing buildings, they could be included as a fourth item. Depending on the application, this is energy performance certificate, building permit, permit to use, etc., of the EPB assessment, some indicators may be applicable or not. Moreover, they may rely on calculations or measurements. Next, a brief outline of the indicators considered in user is going to be presented. Regarding overall energy performance indicators, we have a basis of the energy performance. The overall non-renewable primary energy use, which should be calculated according to H5 in Annex 8 in ISO 52000 Part 1, thus considering compensation between different energy carriers and the effect of exported energy. This indicator assesses the final global impact the energy performance of the building has. An excess consumption during certain moments during the year may be balanced by surplus energy in others. It constitutes the main EP indicator and it will be used to define USERT's EP scale. USERT also includes other indicators, such as the overall primary energy use, summer thermal comfort, winter thermal comfort, and domestic hot water thermal comfort. As far as other informative overall EP indicators, the ones shown in the screen are proposed. Also, the indicators of energy needs per service, expressed in kilowatt hours per square meter in year. However, for the case of the lighting energy needs, the metric proposed would be the daylight autonomy. Thus, the indicator of the lighting energy needs would be the percentage of the occupied hours of the year when artificial lighting is needed, because daylight alone can meet the minimum aluminum threshold. 
user also proposes to include the energy use persistence service and energy vector. Unlike for the energy needs, for the energy use, it is paramount to include, as well as the energy vector use, this is electricity, gas, biomass, etc. The way the indicators are defined allows for a generation of additional ones as a combination of these elemental. Apart from the overall EP indicators, there are also partial EP indicators considered in user. These indicators cover physical and technological elements, which could have a strong connection with building and system inspections. The following indicators are selected as relevant per opaque construction for user. The following per window or skylight. The following in relation to thermal bridges and also in relation to air leakage. This in relation to envelope performance indicator as part as partial indicators. Moving on to technical building systems. For the surface of heating, cooling, domestic hot water, humidification, dehumidification, and mechanical ventilation, per technical building system, per surface, and combination of surfaces. Per generations of system, the indicators shown on the screen are proposed. Also per storage subsystem and per distribution subsystem. Per emission subsystem and in relation to the reporting of performance. For the lining service, the indicators shown on the screen are proposed. This in relation to technical building system performance indicator as part of partial EP indicators. Moving to renewable electricity generation per producing technology, the following indicators are presented. I will focus on the presentation on the photovoltaic technology, although others such as wind turbines or combined heat and power would also be allowed. For storage technology, the following indicators are proposed. This will be in relation to renewable electricity production performance indicators as part of the partial EP indicators. This concludes the partial EP indicators and hence the energy performance indicators considered in user. However, of course, they could be complemented with additional ones for further description and graphical support, for instance. Moving to the smart readiness indicators. They are proposed to be included as a different category than energy indicators. So far, according to the latest publication by the topical group, the indicators are the overall score, which constitutes the main SRI indicator, and it will be used to define the user's scale. Also, the impact scores and the domain scores. Given the strong intertwinement between user's partial EP indicators and the SRI, user's suggestion is for member states to try to integrate the step-by-step -step assessment of the SRI within the EPP assessment itself, rather than creating a parallel assessment which may overburden experts and EPP assessors. The explicit links between the SRI and the EPP assessment have been indicated in the blue font for the previous slides. This in relation to smart readiness indicator. Moving to the indoor environmental quality indicators. They are proposed to be included as a different category than energy indicators. The proposed indicators come from the Aldern project and were developed by Jana Venzelova. The overall Aldern thermal score is proposed. It constitutes the main indoor environmental quality indicator and it will be used to define the user's EAQ scale as well as the seasonal thermal scores. Note that the Alton thermal score, if decided to be included in measured DPV assessment, should be based on measured temperatures rather than calculated ones. This in relation to the indoor environmental quality indicators. Moving to the cost indicators. They are proposed to be included as a different category than energy indicators. The main indicator is the overall energy cost per energy carrier. Note that this indicator is not recommended by user for calculated EPB assessment when they intend to reflect a standardized condition, as common for the purpose of national EPCs, for instance. This is because, most likely, they won't coincide with the energy bills and may discourage final users, reducing trustworthiness of EPCs. However, in the case that the calculated EPB assessment reflect tailored to actual conditions, the cost indicator may be applicable. Of course, it will also be applicable for measured EPB assessments. This concludes the presentation of users' indicators. We now move to the presentation of the user EPC report for professional users. The calculated EPC report is presented in its version for professional or expert users. We can see that there is some building information present as well as the identification, graphical identification of the building through images of itself. 
At the top of the EPC report, we can see the issue date, the building reference, and the specification of the software or procedure used. Also the EPB assessor name and the EPC reference with a link to EPC databases. We see in the front page uh, the main indicators, the energy performance, the thermal score, and the smart readiness indicator. Note that in this first page, there are no technical units present to enhance user friendliness and interpretation by also non-expert users. At the bottom part, we can see some assessor information. In the next page, we have the specification of the on-site visits that were linked to the assessment of this calculated EPV assessment. In the case of being an existing building or a majorly renovated building, we see a description in the next page of the renovation scenario with a specification of the overall cost. Apart from the renovation scenario, we also include the description of the individual renovation actions with an overall change in the indicators if the complete renovation scenario were to be uptaken, but also with information of the individual renovation actions in case the final user would like to perform a step-by-step -step renovation towards the deep renovation potential. This specification of the information intends to enhance and motivate the final user towards step-by-step -step deep renovations. Next, we will present the overall EP indicators as they were already mentioned in the presentation. Also, renewable energy indicators for PV, wind turbines, and combined heat and power. Next, we move to the energy needs for all the heating, cooling, domestic hot water, humidification, dehumidification, mechanical ventilation, and lighting services. Although this EPC is a static version, we have also included a tentative description of what would be the full dynamism of the evolution towards a more digitalized EPCs. For instance, you would click on any demand, for instance, hitting, and get additional information of what other impacts are having the individual elements or constructions on the heating demand, for instance, with regards to glazings, thermal bridges, air leakage, and opaque envelope. In the next page, you would have further detail rather than just having the opaque envelope, glazings, air leakage, and thermal bridges, you could furtherly include some additional information. For instance, by clicking on the opaque envelope, you would have an estimation of what orientations or work construction elements are having most impact. And by further clicking, you would be able of identifying, for instance, that the south wall, south external wall, is the one responsible for the greatest share of heating demand. This, in turn, aims to trigger renovations towards tackling the most sensible elements and the ones that are having a greater effect on the inefficiencies of a building. Moving to the energy use, we have a similar structure, but now expressing the energy use per energy vector for each of the services. Moving to the partial indicators, we would have the envelope indicators per opaque envelope construction. Also, with regards to the window and glazings, with additional indicators such as, such as the solar shading potential. With regards to the thermal bridges, and also in relation to the air tightness of the building. Also, for the technical building systems, indicators with regards to generation, distribution, emission, storage, and reporting of performance. We also included a field where the EPB assessor should either draw or provide a schematic view of the general installation, as well as providing a description of the services included in this thermal installation, as well as the overall rated efficiency of the complete thermal installation. Also with regards to electricity production for photovoltaics, wind turbines, and or combined heat and power. Apart from the energy indicators, we would also include the smart readiness indicator with a more detailed description of each of the impacts and domains at the bottom part. And also the Aldrin thermal score with indicators regarding the overall thermal score, but also with some additional information of the greatest impact that each season has in the Aldrin thermal score.
This is it in relation to the proposal of user project with regards to the calculated EPC report for experts.